The deck building genre is one of my favorite genres to play, especially on mobile. Now, when I think of the poster child of this genre, it's kind of a tie between Slay the Spire and Monster Train. Now, Slay the Spire has been on mobile for quite some time. However, Monster Train just got a port of its own. Is it good? Let's check it out. The premise of Monster Train is actually pretty unique. Now you play as monsters or demons of hell and you're trying to save hell itself by transporting a special object in order to keep hell alive. And there's angels invading hell in order to stop this train and make hell freeze over. It sounds super weird, but I love different premises like this that kind of flip a storyline on its head and give you something a bit different. Before each run of Monster Train, you choose two unique factions of demons or monsters, and they each have their own unique playstyle and cards associated with them, and this determines what cards you can also get during your run. It's really unique, so you can kind of experiment and try out each faction and see which ones you like, and which ones you dislike, and which ones work well together, and you can unlock more as you play. Once you choose your factions, you are plopped straight into the gameplay where you have to choose the direction the train goes in, and this determines what you encounter and in what order, so you have to strategize and determine what's the smartest decision, and these encounters can range from gaining rewards such as passive traits, or taking out cards, or putting in cards, or making decisions in random events or scenarios, or battling things. So you've seen this in other card games, but I really like how the train encounters or the train aspect is mixed in to make it make more sense. Now, when you're in battles, this is where Monster Train really sets itself apart from other deck builders. Now, there are multiple levels to your train and you're trying to guard the core of your train or the special item that I mentioned previously. Now your train can attack and defend itself, but it only has a limited amount of health before it actually caves in and you lose. Each level on your train can only hold a certain value of units, and each unit's value is specified on the card, so you have to strategize which units to use on which level, and which combinations of units will work well while also holding that same value. It's really interesting, and it's another layer of strategic decisions that you have to weigh. Enemies and bosses will usually start at the first floor and then work their way up towards the core of your train, so that makes you have to strategize which cards to use on what floors and which floors to prioritize your defenses, and it gives it a distinct feeling of being a tower defense game mixed with the deck building style element of Slay the Spire. And it works so well, it's so fun, and there's so many strategic decisions that you're having to weigh and balance and do all at the same time. I knew the gameplay of Monster Train would be good, but I was kind of worried about how cramped the UI would feel on smaller screens, especially phones, and I played a majority of this on my iPhone SE 2022, which has one of the smallest screens available in modern phones, and I did not have an issue whatsoever. Some of the text was a bit small, but not too small for my liking, and I was really impressed with how well it did. Another thing I was a little bit nervous about was the controls of Monster Train, but luckily they are fantastic, especially for phones. Now you swipe left or right on the very left or right sides of the screen in order to move between levels on the train, and then you tap and hold on cards for more information and for an enlarged picture, and then you tap and swipe to move cards around and use cards, and it's very intuitive and I have had no problems whatsoever. They took a little bit to get used to, especially with sliding between floors, but then it becomes second nature and it just feels especially good on phones because you can use either thumb in landscape mode. It's important to note that this mobile version of Monster Train supports cloud saves, so you can switch between any device on the fly and it saves your progress, and I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever, and this is something that Slay the Spire was lacking for quite some time. What's fantastic about this port is that it is the full Monster Train experience. It is a premium experience for $9.99 and it gives you the base game and everything it has to offer with no in-app purchases except for one DLC pack, which is available for $3.99. And that affords you more factions and cards to play with. And the base game already has so much content and the DLC adds a ton more content on top of that. 
So there's a ton of value for people who love deck building games here. All in all, I am extremely impressed by Monster Train and its mobile port that we have right here. It has been a blast to play, and dare I say, I prefer it over the gameplay experience of Slay the Spire. I know that may be a hot take for quite a few of you, but I love Monster Train, and it is my preferred deck building game when it comes to mobile and single player experiences in general. It is so good. This is an absolute must buy. You can play this on your phone, you can play it on your tablet, you have the cloud saves. There's just no downside for owning this on mobile especially with the fantastic price tag that is included you would be absolutely foolish to pass it up the link to the game is in the description down below all right guys that was my review for the mobile port of monster train if it helped you out please leave a like pop a sub and comment it really helps me out and let me know your favorite deck builder in the comment section down below i'm really curious i love you guys i hope you guys are staying safe and take it easy